Morpeth, I'll start with you. Obviously, Galadriel is one of the most uh, well-known names in the Tolkien lore. What was it like for you coming into that role with such a legacy behind her? Um, it felt unreal um, to be coming into it. And I think it was bit by bit, it started to seem possible to embody her by doing the stunts, um, by working with a movement director, um, by getting the ears, um, by getting the hair and the costume. It was all these like little bits, like I've said this before, but rehearsing for this in like a carpeted room in your athletic wear, it really <laughs> feels quite silly. Mm. And you need all those bits to get there. And so I was really kind of, it was a huge job by all these amazing craftsmen around me to kind of get Gladriel to exist as a team effort. Well, I think it comes off really well just in those first two episodes alone. Um, I also love the dynamic that yours and Charlie's character have uh, in that second episode. What was it like for you two developing that rapport with one another off camera before filming? I think we'd known by the time cameras rolled, we'd known each other for quite a long time. Yeah. Because we didn't, we auditioned together a few times. And then obviously we moved to New Zealand. I think Mordvith was the first person there and I was the second person there. So we. I'd been alone there for a week. Yeah. It's just going completely nuky. And Charlie arrived. I was like, hi. Um, so we yeah. spent a lot of time there. And I think, didn't I, did I live above you for a while yeah. in, this, in the same apartment building? I lived in the flat above. So I could lean over the balcony and wave. Um, but uh, yeah, so we knew each other really well by the time we actually started filming, which was nice, which was important because we were stuck on the raft together yeah. with no one else around for quite a long time. Yeah. But there was lots of talk about like, when does, who has the power at which point? Because um, I think it's quite push and pull in that regard. Yeah, and definitely. the other always thinks they have the power. Well, I'm excited to see where it goes next. Uh, Tyro, your character also has a really interesting... Yes, bless you. Uh, your character also has uh, quite the interesting start in this series. What has it been like for you coming into it? And what can you tease about what comes next? Me? Oh, um, what can I tease? Um, he gets into a little bit of mischief. Um, you know, he's a little bit rebellious as we see by going down into the barn but um yeah no it's just it's it's super super exciting um uh, he we see him start off you know not the happiest um and it doesn't really go anywhere up from there <laughs> <laughs> i think that's effectively vague i know you can't give too much away but uh i'm i'm curious to see how far down it goes then <laughs> and then maxim i'll turn to you uh the first two episodes you're absent you and lloyd and and uh, your family sadness, sadness. um what is it like for you having to continue to keep your uh the the finer details under wraps yeah it's hard keeping it very vague uh but at the same time it's a wonderful i mean there's so many characters in the in the first season i think it's it's really important to give each world it's time to evolve and grow and fall in love with um so for me as a fan watching the first two episodes i was like wow you know i, I wasn't in it so i could really like enjoy it um, the pain sorry when you what you know when you watch yourself for me all right it's, yeah. it's, quite, pain. Pain. it's quite painful oh, is it? yeah <laughs> so you're free of that I, I was sat next to you watching it so you were just <laughs> playing the whole time I was just there, like, <laughs> smiling, and it was, yeah, it's amazing. It's really right. nice to have defined worlds, that some of which you're not in, Yeah, as an actor. Do you, do you, do you relax as soon as you're like, yeah. oh, we're in the Numenor? It's like watching yeah. a whole yeah, oh, screen. It's like yeah. watching a whole other film. Yeah. 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 Because you don't, you don't actually know it, because we were living in our own worlds, that yeah. when you finally see it on screen, it is like watching, like, a fan, yeah. you know? Or even if, like, we'd read the script, but seeing it and reading yeah. it is so different. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's, yeah, it's good to be able to sit back. Yeah. Well, and with that, I mean, I love how grand in scale uh the first two episodes alone feel so far um and they feel very much like they are up to par with the peter jackson films and so i'm curious what it was like for all of you coming into this with you know the, that legacy as well uh not looming over it but sitting in the background <laughs> yeah and what a legacy um 
And I think, you know, the scale in which those films are made is the scale that Middle Earth requires. And so I'm really glad that we've kind of gone for it so intensely because you have to. Um, yeah. This It's massive and it's magical and there needs to be an element of cinema to it. Um, and so I was really glad that we were working with J.A. as well, who's kind of, his imagination's insane and he's, yeah, he's so, he shoots stuff beautifully and it's what Middle Earth deserves. Well, I couldn't agree more. I look forward to seeing what comes from the rest of the season. Thank you all so much for taking the time to chat. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Grant. Thank you so much, Grant. Cheers.